Nathan Leslie, teaching elder out of Bessemer and now Petersburg Presbyterian Churches. Um, where in Bessemer, I'm working on beating Dawn's high score in terms of years, but I got four more yet to go, so I'm not there yet, Dawn. So. Um, one thing I have found, and I think you have found it too, is that if there's anything constant in the church these days, it's that things continue to change. It's just a part of life. And as I mentioned, it's been a year of changes for me because uh, having stepped out of the directorship role here, I've now stepped into um, taking on a second church uh, and working with Petersburg uh, Presbyterian, which is crossing state and presbytery and synod lines, so all kinds of line crossing there that's been going on. Um, but it's been really great for me to do that and to think about creative ways of doing ministry in the 21st century. Petersburg's a great little church, very similar to Bessemer, and they, uh, about a year or so ago, um, their main Sunday school teacher moved on from that position. One of the tricky issues that they had was the fact that their attendance was kind of inconsistent just uh, with the kids, just due to uh, family you know, dynamics and things like that. And so it was often hard to keep a teacher that could consistently teach when you never knew if you were going to have five kids or no kids on any given Sunday. So what do you do when you're small in number? Do you just throw in the towel and say we're just not a church for kids? Or do you find a, a creative way to work together, um, to minister to the least of these in terms of age and the youngest uh, among us? You could just accept fate, or you could try to compare yourself to XYZ Church and say we should just do it that way, even though that's not something that would work for us. Or you can ch channel the Holy Spirit, and you can get creative pivot and try to do something different as a way of teaching the word of Christ to uh, children. Enter the Sunday school bags. Petersburg Church uh, had an elder at the time who said, you know, we don't, I don't feel compelled to teach Sunday school, but I would be willing to put these bags together. And so as you can see, this is a lovely little bag here, and uh, one of their folks is a former art teacher, and she does a, a teacher, and she does calligraphy, and so she decorates the bags up um, for them. But inside what you find is a Sunday school lesson. We were talking about Abram and Sarai there for a while and uh, in our sermons, and so they have a story in there. And inside there also includes uh, some activities for them to do, uh, you know, just kind of like a children's bulletin would. But it gets better. As they say, wait, there's more. <laughs> um, there's a little star with an activity there, how to do that. And of course, my children's favorite part about this was the snack. <laughs> my son Grayson decided the day that we that I candidated at Petersburg that this was the church that he wanted to go to. <laughs> they gave him food. So best of our had to um, but they did that one for, uh, for that sermon series, and then we had done an All Saints Day celebration, and I read a book to the kids called I'm a Saint in the Making, so Darlene made up the bags that say Little Saint in the Making. Um, and so again, yeah, same thing, there's candy and there's snacks activities, but one of the really neat things about all of this is it provides a way for a smaller congregation to engage children spiritually during worship, but also provides resources to take home with you, and that allows parents and caregivers to engage and nurture children in faith as well. One of the things that I think got overlooked in one of the recent General Assemblies was that there was an overture to encourage family worship again, to encourage families to take an active role in nurturing their children. By and large, what I'm finding more and more as I go through life is that when kids are nurtured at home in their faith, they grow exponentially in it. It becomes something that's not just a thing we do on Sunday morning, but it's something that's part of our everyday lives. And they, when they see it modeled at home, it has a deeper and profound impact. Giving our families resources like this is, is a great way of connecting what they're learning on Sunday morning and worship with what's going on throughout the week in their life. This is also a great benefit for churches that just don't have the volunteer staff to do programming. Um, but the one elder who did this and took this role on herself, ended up um, moving closer to her children. So the session, when I first met with them over the summer, said, oh, we, we need to keep this going, but we don't know how to do it. And no one person felt like they were confident enough. So it became a tag team effort, and I would laugh at the text messages that I would be in 
uh, in the group message during the week. Oh, well, what's the lesson for this week? Okay, Pastor, okay, well, we're going to do this, and this person's going to do that, and I'll bring the snacks, and we'll make sure that, you know. And it was just great to watch as people came together and contributed to making something profound. And the kids love these, and they look forward to taking them. Uh, my kids would take three if they could of their own, just because, you know, the snacks mainly. But they do <laughs> like the activities, too, and it's been kind of a fun way to sort of revamp on what Dad was yakking about up here all day, you know, and they had to sit through. But that's only one idea of many, um, and it's been kind of interesting, too, because Bessar Petersburg, smaller churches with kids, and trying to figure out how to do youth ministry, it's gotten more and more tricky with schedules and life. Um, they have worked on trying to do some other small programming ideas. We're working on doing what we call a milestones of faith, where kids would learn um, the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, or they take their communion for the first time, or um, they learn about baptism, and there's a little keepsake and a sort of way of recognizing them in worship uh, and keeping them active in that. Petersburg also has this great history of doing an acolyte program, which is more than just putting on a fancy robe and letting the kids light the candles. It's pushing a fire to the kids. It's a great mess. Right? <laughs> um, for them, there's a learning that went with that, too, and they have these little soul things that made for them with, like, stripes for each level, and, like, it's like a whole guild thing. It was really cool. And so what I'm finding is, is that we small churches sometimes think that we have very limited resources to do the things that we see going on in bigger churches, and yet we have the greatest resource, which is each other, and ultimately, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us to learn to teach Christ to the next generation. Um, so in an era where things are changing, it can be easy for us to be afraid to experiment and adapt, but I think that's exactly what we need to do, to find creative ways and to find the creative people in our church who even in small, what they think are small ways, can have a big impact on the youth um, in this generation. And so I close by thinking about Psalm 145.4, which says, One generation commends your works to another, O God, and you tell of your mighty deeds. To me, I think that's one of the great blessings that smaller churches have, is we have a really profound way to be able to impact one another in a personal and real way with the gospel of Christ. So, if you have any questions, feel free to find me, reach out to me. I'm happy to share some ideas and uh, kick some things around, but I just encourage you all, don't think you're too small or too old or too whatever. Uh, in small ways, you can make a big difference in teaching the gospel to the next generation. Thanks.